oh, they were big mad. So as a result, they thought it was okay to treat me really dirty. My name is Tiffany. And one of the most important things life has taught me is that you've got to show up for yourself. Hi, my name is Tiffany and welcome to Present For Myself. Have you ever been in a situation where you've had to decide to take care of yourself? Where you've had to show up for yourself in a way that kept you from other people? Where you've had to show up for yourself in a way that caused you to have to set boundaries, maybe leave someplace, a job, uh, a relationship, a spiritual community, a club, uh, an association, whatever it happens to be. And the people that you have to inform or the people who it impacts get angry with you or offended that you have decided to show up for yourself, that you have decided to do what makes you thrive, to do what brings you peace, to do what maintains your health. And you've thought to yourself, the gall, the audacity, or maybe it's made you feel guilty. Maybe it's made you feel like, well, you know, maybe I should just keep, you know, setting myself on fire to keep other people warm. As I began to get ready to make this video, I worked myself into a lather on more than one occasion, thinking about this subject matter, thinking about the people in my past who have given me, for lack of a better word, utter hell for making a choice to take care of who I needed to take care of first in order to make sure that I could be there in any relationship that I possibly have. I began to think about the guilt that I have felt over the course of my life for walking away from certain institutions and people and relationships and, and, and organizations. I began to think about the time that it cost me, the health in many areas that it may have cost me, the fact that I was at the place of just mentally losing it, but I was still trying to bend and contort and move myself in such a way as to make sure that I did not cause any type of discomfort or imbalance or a shift in someone else's situation. Yo, <laughs> let me tell you something. There are reasons why people become angry or upset or offended when you leave or when you adjust the settings of a situation or a relationship. What are those reasons? Well, one of those reasons is because in getting free for yourself, you cause other people to have to see the need to also get free for themselves. You see, a lot of times we gravitate towards people who are similar to us, people who have similarities as far as like their associations and their designations in life and things like that. And so we find ourselves being able to relate. Yeah, me too. You? Yeah. Oh, I, I too have gone through that or I'm going through the same thing. You know, we're, you know, we're both going through a bad marriage. We're both going through a bad partnership. We're both just having a situation with our uh, jobs and let's just talk about it. Let's compare notes. But what happens often is when you get in that, you're so relieved to know that you're not the only one that you forget that even though you're not the only one, it does not excuse you from having to be free. But then one day you wake up and you realize, you know what? There's more. I can get some help. There's a resource available to me or resources available to me. And you begin to utilize those resources and you begin to see a way out, a pathway to confrontation, to making some adjustments in your situation. And then you begin to do that. And then you begin to feel lighter and you begin to move differently. Maybe you have to fully leave whatever that relationship is, or maybe you make some adjustments that make you happier, that include the other person understanding and knowing you, whatever it happens to be, you no longer can relate. As a result, they become uncomfortable. They begin to see their own situation and they can't necessarily uh, see how they can do what you did. Even if you try to help them, even if you, even if you try to tell them that there's a way, and so rather than make any adjustments in their life, rather than look at their own relationship, rather than, you know, look at their selves, they just become mad at you. They project the anger that they have, the disappointment that they have in themselves onto you. They're now showing you negative feelings over something positive that you've had to try to do in your own life. Another reason that people may now become uncomfortable with you or upset with you or whatever it happens to be is because they now have to get used to the new you. They have to get used to the you that has awakened to what the truth is about yourself. See, the facts may have been in the past that this is what I tolerate. This is what resonates with me because of where I currently am. But the truth is I've always been better than what I've had to tolerate. I've always been better than this toxicity. I've always deserved better. And so you begin to walk differently. You begin to talk differently. And you have to cling to that lest you be pulled back. 
So now they see the you that has lost all of the weight, that's eating differently, that's in a happy relationship. Now they see the you that's in finally in that job that you actually love and that you get up every day and you can't wait to go to because it's fulfilling for you. They see you in a situation spiritually where you feel a connection with, with, with the greater, the higher, the whatever it is that you feel that you need. And they can't seem to even get out of the place that they've been going uh, to, to get their spiritual, spiritual fulfillment for the last 20 years because they still there because their family is there or because that's where their grandma went or whatever. But you've decided I'm going to go somewhere place differently or I'm going to try a whole new path boom see people don't want to talk about that I'm gonna try a whole new path oh you you might as well grow two heads if that's the case and then they get upset with you and then the next thing you know here you are feeling guilty feeling instead of like you've left like you've been pushed away I remember when I first left a spiritual community that I used to be a part of I took my leave so that I could take care of myself and so that I could take care of my child in doing so, I found a liberation like I had never experienced before. Oh, they were big mad. They were big mad at the fact that I pretty much did something for my own spiritual overall health that they were either afraid to do for themselves or that they didn't understand or that they just didn't agree with. And so as a result, they thought it was okay to treat me really dirty. But what they failed to see was that they just revealed themselves for who they were all along. So eventually the very thing that I thought I lost was the thing that helped me to heal quicker. Another reason people may become angry or upset or offended because you've decided to move forward is these individuals may not have, you know, directly been your abuser or something like that, but they certainly benefited from your lack of boundaries, from your uh, fear of leaving toxicity and what it did to you, the way that it broke you down, the way that it weakened you um, in many ways. And an example of that is, let's say that because you've been abused or mistreated or you're in a, an environment that's not good for you for the better part of your life, that's taught you to kind of cower, that's taught you to be afraid of confrontation, that's taught you not to stick up for yourself. There are people out there who will take advantage of the type of person you appear to be because of that. So they don't mind asking you to babysit over and over again at the last minute, even though you have your own life, because at the end of the day, they know you're not going to say no. It's just not in your nature or so they don't think. What they don't see is that what you're actually exhibiting is a symptom of being traumatized by abuse, the lack of boundaries and everything. But they'll, they'll, they'll still benefit from it. They'll, they'll take whatever comes from that. Hey, I don't mind. It's whenever you decide to get the help that you need to do the work that's necessary to learn to say no. To learn to say, I mean, I don't deserve to be treated this way. And then all of a sudden their resources cut off. That's whenever it's going to be shown that they're upset because, hey, I may not have been the person that was, you know, directly responsible for why you are this way, but I sure am going to take advantage of the fact that you are this way. So they'll get upset when you finally come to yourself, when you finally wake up and you finally decide, wait a minute, yo, you're going to have to give me more notice than this. Or I don't want to babysit your bad kids. I don't believe there are any bad kids. There are kids who behave badly, but y'all know what I'm saying. I don't want to um, babysit your chaps. I'm not doing it because I, and then they, why? Because I'm going to be home by myself, just um, staring at how beautiful I am in the mirror, or I'm going to stay home and just chill or just know with no reason behind it. Like, mm -mm, I don't do that anymore. Another reason that people will get upset with you because you decide to practice radical self-care is because they're now going to have to fill your space. Think about it in terms of how families sometimes react whenever you tell them, I decided that I'm tired of coming somewhere and pretending that everything is okay, when in all actuality, you all know what's going on. You all know the toxicity and the abuses and all that have taken place and you're pretending while I'm sitting there hurting. Or you just tell them, uh, you know, in no uncertain terms, we're going to have to be completely estranged and you don't have any more contact or anything. They become angry. They become upset. Who is going to fill the space? And oftentimes, if you're in a position to have to do that in the first place, usually you're going to be the person who's already been the black sheep of the family, or you're already going to be a person who's been a scapegoat for so long, blamed for the, the ills of the family. Or, you know, if you would just shut your mouth, we could all get along with pretense and pretend that everything is okay. 
but you know, you want to be a troublemaker and it's all your fault. You cause this, you cause me mall to be upset. You cause so-and-so to fall into depression because you left and decided you wanted to be different than everyone else. You know, you and, and no, normally when that happens, you can look back into your childhood and see how this isn't anything new. The final reason that people will get upset with you for doing what's right for you, regardless of how it may affect them, is because they are the actual abuser. They are the actual toxic people in your life. They're, they're not someone who's benefiting indirectly from your lack of boundaries or what have you. They're not someone who is, you know, they are the actual abuser. And sometimes that can be the, the, the point before, like your family and things like that, but they're the actual abuser. They're the boyfriend. They're the, they're the uh, people in the, the job that's very toxic towards you and treats you like dirt. They're the actual ones. So you go to them and you say, here's my two week notice. Or in some cases you say, you don't deserve a notice. You wouldn't give me one anyway. So I'm not always with the two week notice. Oh, okay. Just stay with them for two more weeks of hell. <laughs> just stay for, you know, because it's just right to do. That's your problem. Now you've been there so long. You've been letting them treat you any kind of way. And now you're literally going to let people convince you to stay for two more weeks, just two more weeks of hell, just two more weeks of being disrespected, just two more weeks of being unprotected. Just two more weeks of feeling like you are not going to make it another day. Just two more weeks. Sometimes you don't have two more weeks. Sometimes you are at the very end of your tether and you don't even have until noon today. You got to go when you got to go. So with all that being said, those reasons, and again, they're not exhaustive. What are you going to do about the fact that these people may be upset, that they may have to make adjustments in their own life? They have to become uncomfortable. These people are going to have to replace you some kind of how, some kind of way. That's none of your business. Let me tell you what is your business. Your business is to redefine and restructure your life in such a way that you look at people and, and, and opportunities and institutions differently. Redefine your relationship with what it means to be in a family. Redefine your relationship with what it means to have a friendship or to have a lover or a spouse or a partner or whatever. Redefine those relationships for yourself. For me, a friend ended up being not someone who I had to be around all the time and be receiving phone calls and hang out with and, and they had access to me 24 seven. No, my true friends, the ones who I call friends, we don't even deal with each other on a regular basis a lot because they're living their lives and I'm living mine. We do try to plan time to be together and fellowship together and, uh, you know, uh, speak or what have you. But the main thing that we have in common is we will ride for each other. They are there for me when I need them. They don't ask many questions either. Sometimes they do, but because we've built such a strong, uh, you know, communion with one another, they already instinctively know when I call, if I need help, which is very uh, few and far between, they're there. And I'm the same with them. I'll see a certain number come up or I'll get a certain text message. And I'm like, I got them because I know them. That to me is friendship. Family, my redefinition or my, my redefining of family is the people who have been there for me and they have shown up in my life and they have given me, given me maternal energy, sisterly energy, brotherly energy, you know, come up under me and called me mama B or whatever. You know, I have some people like that in my life, you know, that to me is family and they understand me and they make, um, they make a place for me in their hearts and in their lives. And they are there for me when I need them too. But they take that particular energy and I don't necessarily have to be related to them by blood. And what that does is it helps me to understand that I don't just have the one family. I don't just have the one friend. Because see, when I limit myself to that type of thinking, oh, the pain, the angst, the fear, the guilt, all those things that come with wondering, what if I lost that person? It's not that your friends should be dispensable and your family should be just disposable, but you don't cling to it with an unnatural loyalty and an unnatural loyalty that makes you just take anything off of people. So yeah, that's what you do about it. That's your business. That other stuff, what they going to think or why are they mad at me? Cause I don't allow this anymore. That ain't your business. Your business is to get free. I just get, I had to go away for a minute because I got a little emotional and 
while I don't mind showing emotion to you all and showing you, you know, how worked up I can get sometimes when I'm thinking about how much I want you to be free, how much I want you to show up for yourself. I just wanted to kind of just take that moment for myself too. I had to go to a place just now and it was my own place. So I'm back now just to end this and say to you, mind your business, take care of yourself, regardless of what negative energy that others try to throw at you for doing what's right for you. Sometimes, Sometimes when we, 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 we,